Grace, I'm such a big fan. Thank you. And when they said, hey, Grace Potter's going to be in town. Do you want her on the show? I was like, please, and will she play? And selfishly, <laughs> as we were testing out audio, because sometimes what we do is we'll test it ourselves. And I was like, yeah, I'd rather hear her test it. Oh, no. Get a that- little... A little extra. You get a morning, get a morning little sonata. And then I was, uh, I was singing stars, and I don't yeah. sing it. You mean hear me try to sing it? Yes. You go for the note. Do it. Star. What? How do you do the note? <laughs> how do you do it? Because I don't hit the In note. In the early morning, yeah. I go stars That's instead what I do. of star. You know, you don't want to go for those notes in the morning. Nobody wants to hear that. I've been to a bunch of your shows, uh-huh. and I always come out going, "Man, that is a rock. She's a rock star." Just Thank straight you. up rock star. Thank you. And I wonder for you, where did it start? Like, how do you? What's the steps to be a rock star? I don't. I don't know what happened. Honestly, I, I'm from Vermont, which is a really small place, and I think because there's only like six hundred thousand people in the whole state, you can just claim to be anything, <laughs> and everyone's like, okay. I mean, it's a very independent. Uh, you know, group of people who want to all be some version of a rock star, but there weren't that many uh, bands out there to to choose from. I mean, we had Fish and then lots of local acts, but we just we just played and played and played until we started to sound like a rock band. So, what was the open mic story with you? You were you were at an open mic. <laughs> Uh, well, there's multiple open mic stories. Are you talking about the one where the I got- drummer, like the, drum- the drummer, of the band's like, "Hey, I think you should play in our band with yes, us." Yes, so exactly. I but he wasn't a drummer yet. He he heard me play at an open mic and uh, walked up to me and was like, "I think we should start a band, and I, I think I'll be your drummer, and and this is gonna be great." And I was like, "Oh, cool." So so you play drums? He goes, "Well, I mean, I play like hand drums, like pots and pans." <laughs> but um, but he he got a kit and we started practicing and. Uh, one thing led to another, and 13 years later, I've, you know, got the battle scars to show for it. When you do an open mic back in the day, like, what are you playing? I had some original stuff. I mean, I wrote songs from when I was, like, 12 or 13. Not that I wanted my parents to hear them, but, you know, you're working through all those complicated adolescent emotions, and I, I turned to music as my, as my source for, for processing all that stuff. You know, I'm such a big fan of your music. I think a lot of our listeners, though, will know you and Tequila. Sure. Which is, and I'm going to play a clip of it right now, which is really one of my favorite country songs of the past 15, 20 Absolutely. years. Absolutely. Incredible. How did you and Kenny Chesney get hooked up? He just called me. Cole called me. But, I mean, it, he, we have a friend, Holly, who um, I used to paint houses out on Martha's Vineyard. And so Holly would go out to the vineyard, and, and she uh, worked with Kenny. And when I was just getting started, somehow my CD ended up in her car. She then gave it to Kenny, and he just put it in the big stack of CDs that everybody does. You know, you get handed a lot of CDs. I'm sure in Nashville you know about that, except there's no CDs anymore. But, you know, before, <laughs> before it was stacks of CDs, and he was just, like, bored on his boat, put it on, heard me um, singing a song I'd written when I was in my teens called Apologies, and he was just like, that, I want that. So Kenny Chesney just calls you, mm-hmm. and what does he say when you answer the phone? Uh, Grace Potter, this is Kenny Chesney. <laughs> <laughs> you and I are going to be good friends. No, uh, we, we, we had a very brief conversation, but really for me it was about the song. I, that song, when it landed in my inbox, I didn't know what it would mean for me or my career to, to wander into that realm until I heard that song. And then that's when I understood that I've always had country in my bones. I just didn't, no, no pun intended. <laughs> But I, I, it was there all along. It, it's just the song calls out to you, and, and that song is just so incredible. The way that it, the way that it tells the story of what love can feel like. You know, then you come back and you do with Kenny again, Wild Child. Yes, yes. Which, again, the first song was so strong. Was there a thought of man, should we even jump back into this because that first one was so good? I think we just had so much fun. We were trying to figure out excuses to just like keep making music together because. You know, he was really exploring all the, the boundaries of what he is a, as a performer and a, and a creative person could do. And that, that song was an expression of some of his wilder sides. And I think that, it, you know, I ended up being able to sort of guide him in that direction. I, I mean, Bonnaroo, you know, name dropping Bonnaroo and Burning Man in a song. That's, that's, that's brave, Kenny. We were talking before you came on the air, and you said, well, now that I have a kid, I have to wake up this early. Yeah, it's, it's the 6, 6.30 a.m. Mama, tickle. tickle. <laughs> that's what Amy says to me, too, when oh, we yeah. start the show. She's like, Bobby, tickle. That's how you early. get, that's how you get that's into it in the morning. Like, how else are you going to wake up? You know? the, the rumor about you was that after that last record, you weren't yeah. going to do another record. 
And it it wasn't a rumor. I mean, I I I really went through a, a process of wondering if if it was good for me. Music is always come very naturally, but it kind of felt like cheating. Like I I like painting houses, and I liked working in diners, and I liked um, being somewhere where you had to hone your craft. And for me, music was something that, of course, I I played a lot and I I paid my dues, but. I don't rehearse, you know, I don't like sit there and go over scales on the guitar. It just felt like something I was, um, I was born with. And so in a weird way, when, when things started to sort of unravel in both my professional and personal life, which was all tied together, it just felt like maybe that's, that's that bookmark in my life. And I'm, I'm cool now. I, I did the rock star thing, and I can. You were just gonna quit. Go back that was to a possibility houses. that you were just gonna quit. Do you know how awesome it is to paint houses? Do you know how sad I would have been if you never made music <laughs> again? But like the fumes get you kind of dizzy. No, no, I, I, I really do. Um, I needed to fall back in love with music. I, I sort of blamed it for uh, some of the hurt and and things that happened in in my life. And uh, you know, when whenever you have success, um, the the possibility of failure around that or that somebody else might get hurt just kind of felt like it wasn't worth it. And I just wanted to garden and, and, and get real in my own life for a while. Well, that being said, uh, you, you have a new album, which I can't announce, right? We were cool on me announcing it? Okay, because it was... It's I, not we, a secret anymore, Bobby. Okay. Uh, the new album will be called Daylight. Yes. And that is in reference to something much bigger than just... Like it sounds like it's a maybe a, a metaphor. Yeah. Well, I think um, because of how long it's been, you know, it, it's sort of like being lost in the woods, and and you need to find your way out. And for me, that that word daylight means um, telling the truth and and stripping back all the things that you know. It's kind of like if you've been in a bar all night with like the really nice lighting, everybody really looks good, and there's like sort of a Instagram filter on everybody's faces, <laughs> you know, just that. Those those uh, Edison bulbs really do the trick. But then when the bar wants to close, they want to kick you out, and they they turn the lights up, and suddenly you're sort of faced with the reality of it. And I I needed to be cool with the reality of my life, and that's what this record is really about. So the whole album comes out when? Well, I mean, the single hits uh, as of midnight tonight. The pre-orders are on sale. By the sale. way, the single's called Love is Love. I'm going to play that in one second. That's right. Yes. But, the, but so we're kind of trickling it out. You know, we've got a few tracks that we're going to be slowly leaking, but the ultimate d- uh, date of the release of the album isn't until October. So we're going to really drag you guys through the mud. That's pretty quick, though. It. Sometimes artists come on and, like, put out a new record. We're like, when? 2071. Yeah. We're like, wait, well, this is... <laughs> There's a lot of things going to happen. So yeah. in October, that's 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 pretty quick in it the is. grand scheme. Yeah. yeah, but it's been four and a half years, so I think it's it's time to um to sort of plant my feet back, you know, plant my flag back on the moon here. You know, Grace Potter is here with us. Uh, a couple quick questions for you before we play the new song that yeah. comes out at midnight tonight. You mentioned you worked at a diner. How much do you, what's the percentage you tip, Grace? Oh, I, I'm such a good tipper. I really do. I feel like you can't walk out of a place with that. Even if it was a terrible service that they did, uh, they, it starts at 20%. And I, I just move up from there. I'm not like, I'm not money bags. I just think that people work really hard and they deserve to be, um, you know, rewarded for even not being that good at their job. And sometimes, as I wait at tables for a long time too, it's yeah. not our fault. No, it, that's what I mean. Is like sometimes you 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 end up being the 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 front man or front woman for a disastrous kitchen, for example. The front man or front yeah. woman—that's a good analogy. Yeah. If you open your YouTube right now, what do you see? Oh, it's all baby lullaby, slumber, <laughs> spa music type stuff. <laughs> or or Bobby Darren, which I've been listening to a bit. And uh, finally, I, I, you can make anything sound pretty. Uh, your grocery list. Uh, definitely yogurt, almonds. Uh, I really like those, um, food should eat, taste good chips. You know, the, ch- what are they called? You know, they're like the multi-grain corn chips. If you and were to sing your grocery list back pretty, how would it sound? Orange juice. Oh, that's, that's it. I definitely want to Vodka get- too. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to play the new song, which by the way, um, this, the new, this new song here was produced by- produced, My husband. Yeah. Mr. Eric Valentine. Like, you guys- wrote and produced the whole thing just about, huh? Yeah. It's, this 
this album is really a partnership of of two brains that do totally different things. He's like Spock and I'm like Captain Kirk. You know, it's like I'm all emotion and instincts and sort of animalistic just rah and and he's able to really thread the needle and, and see things for what they are and, and utilize science and math and his incredible skills as an engineer and producer to to see clearly what needs to be done. And, and, um, and that, that led to an amazing love and, and an experience that I will never forget. You Is know? Keith Urban somehow involved in, in this song? Well, Keith, no, but Keith and Eric have gone way back. And, and for some reason, Keith just really likes the way Eric mixes his songs and he just keeps on calling oh is that what it is i knew there was a relationship there yeah they they've worked together for a long time i think um if if you're not familiar with eric valentine's uh track record he's he's definitely got um just just check him out you'll see He's, he's he's quite a busy man that producer Grace Potter, I'm a huge fan. Thank you so much, Bobby. Thanks for having me. I am going to play Love is Love right now. You cannot stream it or download it until midnight tonight. This is it. 11 Central. Um, So here we go. This is the first time it's ever been played. From Grace Potter, here is Love is Love. (laughs) 